Um, and even though um, different kinds of debt, uh, as Andrew was mentioning, have have different financial implications, like right, like if they can take your house in mortgage debt, that's different than, than student debt, which they can't yet take back the education that you learned, um, <laughs> right? But uh, but nonetheless, on on the on the on the not, banks, you know, state not with cash, the current technology, right? right. They're be. developing. Right, right. <laughs> There's but, another element that was brought up here. When you're talking, when you do a debt analysis, right, and you talk about how the different debt is being how it breaks down and what, where it goes and who is responsible for this and that. Just remember, we're still paying $85 billion a month for quantum easing. That is a subsidy. That is a bailout. I think total student debt is $65 billion. No, it's past $1 trillion. Oh, I'm sorry. What am I saying? Yeah, of course, $1 mm -hmm. trillion. But still, when you think about that, it's not... It's not that much money what we're, what we're talking about. This is, you know, our, you know, they don't even know how much money is still in derivatives, right? They're still, the banks do not know how much money they owe and what their actual assets are. Is there a question for you? Yeah, uh, you know, look, as in, immigrant, you know, um, I came 34 years ago and I was able to, I don't have a debt, you know, but, uh, I was able to pay for my school and as a dishwasher, as a car wash. And uh, then, you know, just I was kind of working on the numbers. If I had to come now and I compare the time that, you know, I came and the time now, I just, I couldn't believe, you know, the whole American dream just becoming, it's a nightmare. It just, the numbers is unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so it just kind of, I was kind of thinking from a uh, legal point of view that this is like, I think, you know, like government intervention mm -hmm. is the way to go. Uh, if there is a way also to kind of, you know, uh, bring like, you know, collective bankrupt, declaring bankrupt, you know, just kind of, <laughs> so there was a way out long time ago. Uh, just kind of uh, when you declare, uh, uh, chapter uh, le chapter 11 or something like that? Chapter 9, w whatever. It just like, it just kind of, you get punched for a few years, then you go back to regular, you know, life. You know, you start over. But I think the, the, the law change, you know, you cannot do that. So one thing that, you know, maybe a fair way to do kind of proposing like the you know, government has to create a job, like a service, all these debtors, you know, you just kind of, you know, provide a service as a national service, whatever that is, so that you work for the community, for the people, at the same time, you eliminate, you know, forgiveness for the debt. Otherwise, we are not gonna be uh, out of this unless we just kind of, you know, come with some kind of solution. All this, you know, you were talking about, you know, making arrangement, it will not be, you know, eliminated. It just, you know, so I don't know if there is any kind of stuff what's going on. I'm, I'm wondering if we might just get in some voices that, that haven't spoken yet. Does, does, it, does anybody that, that hasn't spoken yet want to share some, any reflections or questions that you have lingering? I got, I got a friend of mine who uh, a couple of years ago housing market was great. He he got into a, the investment of two or three family homes. And we could something happened with the repairs and he couldn't couldn't make the payments. And uh, I guess they foreclosed and took it away from him. But he still he still managed uh, like after fifteen years he was still paying on it. Even though they took it away from him. And I'm like, why are you doing that? It's like it don't even make sense. He's he's like, oh, I feel bad. He goes, I, I owe money, I gotta pay it back. I'm like, but they took it away from him, right? <laughs> and then that was just another burden, and then he finally paid it off, and he was all happy. I'm like, you don't, you don't have nothing to show for it now, God. Mm. It just seemed crazy. Mm. Yeah. Well, are there, are there, are there crazy. people that, that haven't spoken yet? Is there, is there anything that, that people want to share? Okay. I just wanted to ask, what's your position on Elizabeth Warren, and the kinds of issues that she keeps raising about uh, the economy and the public debt, and the role of elected elected officials in lowering these these uh, these interest rates that uh, that are predatory 
Uh, and I know that that, I don't want to sound like a reformist, I just wanted to know what your position was yeah. on, on. Can I respond briefly to that and also perhaps to your uh, injunction about trying to, trying to involve government action in this? I mean, our position is that yes, there, there are reformist groups, especially in the student debt, on the student debt landscape that have been trying for many, many years um, to petition lawmakers gotten absolutely nowhere. Uh, every so often lawmakers grandstand in Capitol Hill and over whether they can raise, you know, rates of interest by half a percent or whatever. And at the same time, the government extracts over $50 billion a year in sheer profit from its federal lending system. I mean, that is a real mind fuck to people when they hear that, that the government profits and then uses the money not to plow it back into education, but to pay down the federal deficit. Like yeah. Utterly immoral. Warren and the, her allies certainly are doing, uh, are doing good work, but they're not going to be able to achieve anything unless there's a deficit movement pushing from below. So our primary, really our primary focus has been on self-organization, on self-empowerment, uh, which which is part of the, the vast uh, machinery of reinventing democracy, which Occupy was one small part of and continues everywhere. And, uh, and we feel that the best we can do working on a small scale is to find a proof of concept example of collective action that will work. This is what we did with the Rolling Jubilee to some degree. It's a very small scale thing, but has a large symbolic impact. If we could find a group of debtors and the last buy actually we're doing with the Rolling Jubilee finally will be a student debt buy um, fairly soon. Uh, we haven't bought student debt because it's not cheap. Uh, it doesn't sell very cheaply on the secondary debt market precisely because you can't declare bankruptcy uh, on student debt and precisely because there's so many powers on the creditor's side, it's easier to collect on. So it doesn't sell so cheaply. But we have found that it does sell cheaply. We're going to buy it and organize a little campaign around it, try and figure out if we can find a technological platform, build one that will allow us to organize that group. And if we can pull off that kind of debt strike on a limited scale, then it will have an impact. Other people will say, look, it can be done. Let's do it over here. Let's do it there. Let's do it on a bigger scale. Yeah. Uh, one of the things we recommended in the prom is you've already yeah, done it. Uh, yeah, the debt resistance operation manual is that taking, getting your student debt and putting it on credit cards. I'm not saying you should do this, but the option is to put it back. If you feel you're in a position where you'll never pay it off, start re restart. Great. So maybe I'll, I'll speak to that, and then, and then I think we should wrap up because there will be other panels. Um, you know, Elizabeth Warren, um, I like a lot of things that she says. I like, I think that, um, I mean, you can YouTube her and just watch her calling bankers out to their face in a way that is, like, emotionally really gratifying. Um, uh, and, you know, in the same way that whenever they bring a panel in front of Congress, you know, for steroids and baseball, it could be whatever you want. It doesn't matter. You know, it doesn't matter. Uh, like, you know, we can't get gun control passed in Congress. We can't get immigration passed in Congress. And as long as all the politicians, um, as, as long as the bankers have them in their pockets, um, we're not going to get what we get. You know, there's no way in hell that uh, that the politicians are going to cancel are going to cancel our debt, much less give us free education, free healthcare, etc. Um, if they do, and if someone wants to organize around that, great, you know, more power to them. But I'm not going to waste my time on that. Um, and I think that just like you know. Um, the, the government's not going to give you higher wages. You got to go on strike for those higher wages. I think I think the same thing is true with our, with our debt. So so I think autonomously, um, from from autonomously from the parties and autonomously um, from from other forms of organization, I think we have to we have to organize from below. Thank you. Yeah. Great. Uh, Maybe no. 100 percent of the house will be up for elections in these midterms in November. So mm -hmm. every two years. Every year. 100 percent of the house. Years. The house. Yeah. So the, 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 the revisions are great. So, so some of so us believe that you, we're not going to achieve what we want to do within a capitalist system. That's yeah. not. We don't have a rich consensus on that within the movement. But we have to put people in the environment for more yeah. profits. Yeah.
Great. All right. So everyone, thank you so much thank for, you. for your time. Um, thank